this photo is not edited. Look closely. The Civil Rights Movement, the Vietnam War, Woodstock, and the killing of John F. Kennedy. These are just a handful of the many events that occurred throughout the 1960s decade. It was a moment of transition and progress for the whole globe, not just the United States. Consider a period when some of the most significant events of the 20th century were taking place, even if not everyone was aware of it. Woodstock Bound On his way to the Woodstock Music Festival, a guy grins in his Ford Mustang in Bethel, New York. Woodstock was a music event that took place in the summer of 1969. Between August 15th and 18th, about 400,000 people congregated on a dairy farm in southern New York. There were 32 performers in all, including Joan Baez, The Grateful Dead, Santana, Jimi Hendrix, and others. The festival has been called one of the most significant events in music history. Beatlemania In 1964, the Beatles were surrounded by female admirers as they exited the water in Miami, Florida. Beatlemania is defined as the 1960s extreme passion for the English rock band, The Beatles. It started in 1963 and lasted until the band's demise in 1970. The Beatles craze was not limited to the United States and followed them everywhere they traveled throughout the globe. It remains one of the most intense fandoms ever aimed against a musical act. Daredevil One glance at this incredible photograph explains why actress Anne Margaret gained the moniker Daredevil. The lovely redhead is shown here riding a motorbike, a sport she began at the age of 10. She was originally labeled as a female Elvis Presley in her professional career and went on to feature in films such as Bye Bye Birdie, Viva Las Vegas, The Cincinnati Kid, and Tommy, among others. She's also a terrific vocalist with a few albums under her belt. Raquel Welch's Controversial Talk on The Dick Cavett Show from 1968 until 1974, The Dick Cavett Show was hosted by comedy writer and playwright Dick Cavett. Cavett hosted the renowned Late Night Chat program where he interviewed a diverse range of guests including Katherine Hepburn and Lucille Ball, as well as David Bowie and Orson Welles. Cavett had one of the most exciting programs ever in the summer of 1970 with Raquel Welch and Janis Joplin. Welch was discussing a contentious gender change comedy she worked on when Joplin interjected that she couldn't keep up with the picture because it kept changing. Welch said calmly, well, the whole movie's about change. Despite the fact that these issues were still considered forbidden, the crowd burst out laughing. Surfing USA A group of surfers performs surfing moves in Hawaii about 1960. Surfing didn't have the notoriety that it enjoys now in the 1960s. While surfing existed in the 1930s and 40s, it wasn't until the late 50s and early 60s that it gained popularity. Surfers eventually took on a hippie-like atmosphere, earning them the moniker Beach Bums. The Beach Boys, the safaris, and movies all served to promote the culture and lifestyle. Ready to fly? This isn't something you see every day. Brigitte Lindman, a Swedish stewardess, and a showgirl posed for this 1959 photograph. Lindman was sent to check the showgirl outfit after learning that the stewardess's clothes will shortly be shortened. Lindman had catapulted to stardom only a year before after appearing on the cover of Life magazine. She had competed against 53 other girls to be the issue's cover girl. This completely redefines the phrase in-flight entertainment. Vietnam Soldiers Coming Home This girl's expression tells it all. On November 1, 1955, the Vietnam War officially began. The conflict continued till the end of the 1950s and spanned the whole decade from 1960 to 1969. Although the war did not officially end until April 30, 1975, there were moments of joy between then. Lieutenant Colonel Robert Sturm, an Air Force pilot, was liberated as a POW and reunited with his family in this emotional shot. He hadn't seen them in over a decade. Sultry Side of Anne Margaret Anne Margaret has previously shown us her daring side. Here's another angle, seductive seductress. In this vintage black and white photograph, the Swedish-American singer and actress stares out from under her flawlessly coiffed hair. 
and Margaret was a member of the Subtle Tones, a Chicago-based band that eventually toured Las Vegas and California before becoming renowned. She met George Burns while on tour, and the rest, as they say, is history. Linda Ronstadt has won 11 Grammys. Linda Ronstadt is one of the best artists of the 20th century, having won 11 Grammy Awards. She began her singing career in the 1960s, but it wasn't until the following decade that she was dubbed the First Lady of Rock. Throughout her career, Ronstadt has released 30 albums, including the above-mentioned Hasten Down the Wind. The album, released in 1976, became Ronstadt's third consecutive million seller, making her the first female in history to do so. Flight attendants of the 60s radiated glamour in youth. Several decades ago, nearly every girl aspired to be a member of the elite flight attendant sisterhood. Flight attendants were bright and effervescent, exuding glitz and freshness. While that isn't entirely true of today's flight attendants, times have changed. The 1960s were referred to as the golden age of the stewardesses. At the time, the vast majority of flyers were wealthy men. However, flying is no longer just for the wealthy businessmen of yesteryear. As flying has grown more popular, flight attendants' appeal has become more general and, let's be honest, toned down. Civil rights activist Joan Trumpauer Mulholland was put on death row. Many people may not know Joan Trumpauer Mulholland, but her face and tail are worth remembering. Mulholland is a civil rights activist and freedom writer who worked for civil rights in the 1960s and beyond. Mulholland sacrificed her friends, family, and schooling to support issues she believed in. She was imprisoned after participating in her first sit-in in 1960. This was one of many arrests, including a two-month term on death row at Parchman Penitentiary. She was liberated, and now in her 70s, she continues to fight for equal rights. On the set of The Battle of the Network Stars Joyce DeWitt of Three's Company grins with Debbie Boone and Maren Jensen, who were competing for ABC in The Battle of the Network Stars in 1978. The ABC series also included talent from competitor networks, CBS and NBC. Viewers got to see the celebs participate in a range of activities, from bowling and cycling to kayaking and volleyball. Other famous faces were Robin Williams and Billy Crystal, in addition to these three females. The Monkees Go for a Cruise In 1966, the Monkees were on set for a photograph at Sunset Gower Studios in Los Angeles. Mickey Dolenz, Michael Nesmith, Peter Tork, and Davy Jones are seen from left to right. Their TV series dominated the late 1960s for nearly two years. We loved watching the program about four young guys aspiring to be members of a renowned rock and roll band. They were successful in certain ways, despite the fact that it was for a television program. We've all heard the songs Daydream Believer and Last Train to Clarksville. Stop in the Name of Love Back in the 1960s, Stop in the Name of Love was one of the Supreme's most popular songs. On May 11, 1965, they were rehearsing on the set of the television program Hullabaloo in New York City. Frankie Avalon, the presenter of Hullabaloo, is singing along with Mary Wilson, Florence Ballard, and Diana Ross as they practice their performance. The charming girls from Detroit, Michigan, went on to become one of America's most commercially successful Motown groups, with 12 Billboard Hot 11 number one songs. They're perhaps the most successful American vocal trio to date. A Break from Breakfast Audrey Hepburn takes a break from the famed position she strikes in photographs for Breakfast at Tiffany's. In 1961, the film was filmed on location in New York City. Hepburn portrayed Holly Golightly, a New York City socialite who seems to enchant everyone she meets. The part is undoubtedly Audrey Hepburn's most memorable one, and she's therefore become an idol to the generation that grew up during these similar times. Most females try to replicate the same degree of class at some time in their life. Iconic Actress and Model Sharon Tate Sharon Tate, an actress and model who rose to prominence in the 1960s, soon established herself as a promising talent. She made her film debut as an extra in Barabbas in 1961, and her most renowned performance was in the cult classic Valley of the Dolls in 1967. On August 9, 1969, Sharon Tate and four other individuals were murdered by the legendary cult leader Charles Manson. 
She was 26 years old and pregnant at the time of her death. She was taken too young, yet she left behind a legacy that continues to amaze others. John F. Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson discussing the Cuban Missile Crisis Those who remember the Cuban Missile Crisis recall a terrifying period. The 13-day confirmation period between the United States and Soviet Union lasted from October 16, 1962 to October 28, 1962. The Cuban Missile Crisis is still regarded as the closest the Cold War got to a full-fledged nuclear war. In this chilling photograph, John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson sit for a briefing on the challenges. Robin Hilton inspired the term blonde bombshell. Robin Hilton began her career as a weather lady in her hometown of Twin Falls before becoming a renowned model and actress. The Idaho native left home to explore greater opportunities, ultimately securing roles in the entertainment industry. She also appears in the Mel Brooks classic Blazing Saddles, as well as Playboy. This was probably the part that made her a household name. People were attracted by her appearance, so much so, that many think the phrase blonde bombshell was invented after her appearance on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Bridget Bardot at the Beach Bridget Bardot was a major celebrity in the 1950s and 1960s. Bardot was more than a celebrity, she was an icon who influenced future generations. Born in 1934, Bardot began her career as a child actress, appearing in films such as And God Created Woman, Contempt, and A Very Private Affair. Bardot was on holiday on the French Riviera when this photograph was taken in the early 1960s. She's still regarded as one of cinema's most recognizable faces, despite being in her 80s. Tina Louise said Gilligan's Island ruined her career. Tina Louise, who was born in New York City, had her first acting job when she was only two years old. She studied acting, dancing, and singing as a teen and starred in countless tiny parts in musicals before landing her big break in God's Little Acre. Louise went on to feature in a number of great films, as well as the iconic television series Gilligan's Island. Despite the fact that she went on to have a great career following the program, Louise has said that Gilligan's Island wrecked her career. She's declined to attend any of the reunions. Alfred Hitchcock in his natural habitat For any lover of Alfred Hitchcock's work, seeing him behind a set of drums with two big bones as drumsticks should come as no surprise. During his six-decade career, he directed 53 feature films and was dubbed the Master of Suspense. According to one account of his cinematic technique, a Hitchcock film is an organism, with the whole implied in every detail and every detail related to the whole. In 1960, he released Psycho, which is regarded as one of the best horror pictures of all time. 